I have a question for you. A question. Does the sentence, I am enlightened, make any sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we're done the video. No, well, really, I, really and, and I, I, I think, I, I try not to use that word. Uh, but people, since they're running around claiming they are that, and you say, well, that begs the question of what is it? But if he just said, I mean, I set out to do what I did, based not on getting enlightened, or whatever word that means, or awakened, I was trying to get rid of my suffering. And I, that was my main purpose. I had a goal. They said, don't have a goal. I had a goal. I wanted to get rid of my suffering. I'd suffered enough by my late 20s, and so I was, I just want to get rid of my suffering. So people say, oh, what do you think, am I enlightened or not? I say, well, are you, are you rid of your suffering? If you stop suffering. And you can also use the marker, which I've used. Of, you know, can, have you gotten rid of your self-referential thoughts? Have you dramatically changed your self-referential thought context, energy, stickiness, etc.? And are you still suffering? And that's pretty much all that matters to me. I don't care what you call it. You can call it Rumpelstiltskin. But if you're still suffering or feeling you need to suffer, then you've got work to do. And if you're using a sentence that has a subject in it, with an object in it, <laughs> like, I am enlightened. Mm. We can feel it as we kind of chant it, that the I is a cutting off. There is a referring to some localized being there. Mm -hmm. As we refer, as soon as we refer to some localized being, we have a blockage against the oneness. We have a blockage against the unfolding and evolution of the cosmos. Right. That blockage, in my humble experience, feels really, really, really bad. That is the suffering that you were trying to escape. I had a very similar trajectory in the sense that I hit, uh, you know, a very, I had a very big depressive suicidal crisis in the late 90s. And I knew I had to do something. Mm -hmm. I was either going to die or I was going to get better. Yeah. And I did some intensive... Uh, plain old, like, very straightforward psychotherapy uh, for six months. Mm -hmm. uh, and during the course of it, essentially did a lot of what is in the Sedona method and mm. other techniques, which was I just was with my emotions in a way that I had either been unable to be before or frightened with of them or not aware that that was a possibility, mm -hmm. basically. And by the end of six months of very intense and difficult work with a really remarkable guy, he, you know, he basically said, okay, you know, you're, you're, you're done with that. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I am done with that. But you know what? I don't want to just be not sick. Mm -hmm. I want to transcend. Mm -hmm. And it was that, I think it was that experience of the difference between feeling very sick mm -hmm. and feeling not so sick. Mm -hmm. That led me on this, what you you know, path of what you call to have a goal. I had a goal. I wanted to find out could I mutate, mm -hmm. and those were pretty much the, the the words that I used to myself. So, you know, this idea of there being an endpoint of such a process is really befuddling to me. Mm -hmm. um, there are thresholds, of course, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's such a joy to be involved in this continual learning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, for myself, that learning takes the form of suffering. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the cosmos has something to teach me, and it's so big that I momentarily separate myself off from it, and then there's suffering. So I think we have to look at another level of this declaration and saying not only does it not make a sen any sense, because if we say, I am enlightened, there is a being over here mm -hmm. with this attribute which is being assigned to it, somehow separate mm -hmm. from everything else, but also that, uh, you know, there is a kind of strategy involved in, in this claim mm -hmm. to say, I am enlightened, right? That, you know, I am enlightened, therefore you should listen to me. Mm -hmm. I am enlightened. Therefore, you should buy my books. Mm -hmm. I am enlightened. Therefore, you should come to my workshops. I wonder why it needs to be brought up at all, except insofar as I do think it's important to mention that awakening is. Awakening occurs. Mm -hmm.
it is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I gave an interview long, some while ago, and the thesis was what uh, one of the big Zen masters at the end of the 19th or at least 20th century said was that enlightenment is capable of endless enlargement. I think it's a your point that um, there is a, you know, the goal, my goal is to get rid of suffering, and I found out getting rid of the eye was the way to do that. But as you get out there, as we've talked before, you find that in fact it keeps, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into this thing. Uh, even as you think it couldn't possibly be any more transcendent, you find that in fact you understand something differently, and then as you do, kind of a whole puzzle shifts somehow, and you have a different puzzle solved a different way, but at a deeper level. And so it does keep going deeper and deeper, but it's not, it's not running out to the sides deeper, it's running, taking this place, and then taking this puzzle deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. You can see this keep going and going. So I guess the big problem with having a, that's it, I'm done now, is you find out you aren't done. You look back and say, well, I'm not done. But then you try and say, yes, but I'm, I'm good enough. But you can keep going and going and going. And that's the most beautiful thing about this. Right. What's so beautiful is that it's just as big in here as it is out there. Mm. And so, you know, imagine by analogy, if, you know, Saturn V rocket you know, launch it, you know, say it's 1969, achieve orbit. Mm. That's a threshold, sure. You've, you, you've, you've broken out of the orbit of uh, right. the Earth. Okay, we're done. We're done we, here. We've made it into space. <laughs> we're, done. we're done. We're done here. We've, we've <laughs> scratched the cosmic surface. Check. Therefore, we are done. Check. I mean, you know, and so I think that there is a little bit of that because... There's such an extraordinary difference between the pull of, you know, the gravity, as it were, of suffering, of ordinary suffering, mm -hmm. that, you know, when it releases, when it is seen for what it is, when the, when the snake is seen to be a coil of rope, you know, there's the kind of woohoo, you know, mm -hmm. victory dance. But the depth of what can be investigated and encountered by somebody mm -hmm is so extraordinary that I feel like this language of I am enlightened versus awakening is. Mm -hmm. Awakening is an ongoing process that is occurring mm -hmm. among human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, you know, people might want to experiment with the difference between those two statements yeah. and their effects. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of early branching. I mean, people start down this path and they find out they're, they can't get much further. And so what they do is they branch out to the sides. I will do all these other things in this moving towards awakening, but in fact they're not deepening anything. They're just taking this thing and making it so broad that nobody can not be whatever they are. Enlightened. Everybody gets to just decide what they want to be as enlightened. But there is really something fundamental different about this thing. There is a fundamental difference in going deeply and deeply and deeply into this awakening process. It is not out to the sides. It's really this one understanding can go deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but it, it, you're right though, I mean, this, this, why would I, why do I need a title, enlightened title, unless I'm trying to get followers and pass out badges and charge for them and have levels so I can reward them at different levels and they can pay me more and more money as it gets bigger and bigger. But other than that, you know, what's the value of having a label when in fact you know in your heart of hearts that you, you maybe aren't? And somebody, and the question is too, well, only you can yourself know whether you're enlightened, which is BS. Mm. I mean, the very nature of the whole Zen world is that you can ask people questions and you can ascertain from their answers whether or not they are you know, awakened or not awakened, or awakening or not awakening. And it's pretty, pretty obvious. And it's not a question of just having the right answer. You can say 14 and say 14 is the answer. 14. Yeah, and, four, and 14 yeah. may be the answer, but, but in fact it, it's, it's not. Um, it's 42. The, actually, no, well, it's 14, but, but the way in which you say 14 yeah. tells whether or not you are awakening or at least you know, down that path or not. It's not just the words. It's actually the music in the words and the way somebody says 14. Mm -hmm. You can tell if somebody's saying 14 from a place of knowing or not. Well, you can also tell if there's a lot of internal dialogue going on or not mm -hmm. pretty instantly mm -hmm. in another person, uh, whether or not they're... Mm -hmm trying to shield that or not. It's mm -hmm. pretty transparent mm -hmm. and mirrored in their way of being. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I do think that it's important to you know reiterate that there that there is a goal because if enlightenment were, were whatever we wanted to be, and we were in a position to just decide whoever we are, mm -hmm. when we're enlightened or not, that decision itself would be the decision to remain in hell. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it would, because <laughs> it would it would be okay. This is good enough. That's a good essentially, enough. I mean, talk about settling. Like, why would you even settle for enlightenment? Yeah.